الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عما يتساءلون عن النبأ العظيم الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون ألم نجعل الأرض بهذا والجبال أوتادا وخلقناكم أزواجا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا وجنات ألفافا إن يوم الفصل كان ميقاتا يوم ينفخ في السور فتأتون أفواجا وفتحت السماء فكانت أبوابا وسيرت الجبال فكانت سرابا إن جهنم كانت مرصادا للطاغين مآبا لابسين فيها أحقابا لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا إلا حميما وغساقا جزاء وفاقا إنهم كانوا لا يرجون حسابا وكذبوا بآياتنا كذابا وكل شيء أحصيناه كتابا فذوقوا فلن نزيدكم إلا عذابا إن للمتقين مفازا حدائك وأعنابا وكواعب أترابا وكأسا دهاقا لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا كذابا إلا جزاء من ربك عطاء حسابا رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهم الرحمن لا يملكون منه خطابا يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة صفا لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال صوابا ذلك اليوم الحق فمن شاء دخل إلى ربه مآبا إنا to our VCDs for reciting to us Surat Nata. MashaAllah is an example of something that they have been working on for the entire year. And you see, MashaAllah, the fruits of their labors. Welcome to our mothers and fathers. For those of you who are returning families to the Rahma Foundation programs, welcome. And to those of you who are new to our group as well, welcome. MashaAllah. My name is Rania Awad. I am the director of the Rahma Foundation and supervise the girls and youth arm of the Rahma Foundation. For those who are not familiar with Rahma, Rahma was incorporated about 10 years ago now, mashallah, and it is a non-profit organization that was founded by uh, women teachers, women who had gone, like myself, who had gone to study in various countries throughout the world and had returned, um, study their Islamic sciences, I should say, and when they returned, formed together to have a platform for women to teach other women and to teach girls. So that is the mission of the Rahma Foundation, and through it we've been doing girls programming, like these Friday night programs, like our summer camps, and also women programming, like our classes and workshops and conferences. Alhamdulillah. I hope all of you have um, been touched by Rahma Foundation in one way or another, and perhaps some of our families have been touched many times over. Alhamdulillah. We ask for your continued dua and support. The, um, the, the group here, I'm just going to do a very quick introduction to the work that we do here on Friday nights, in case it is new to all of you. This work was really um, something I had seen when I was studying in Damascus, Syria. 
mashallah, no problem, in Damascus, Syria. Um, I saw an amazing group of women who, women teachers, who really worked with other women and other girls to teach them their deen. And I found there are so many female role models who had mastered both the deen sciences but were fully in the dunya um, in terms of being able to have careers and jobs and be amazing mothers and wives and really do an amazing balance of what a Muslim woman ought to be. Someone who can balance the deen and dunya fully, excuse me, and properly. And that is what inspires the work that we do here, that our girls um, are embedded in the deen sciences and are really, um, really identity is what we're working on here. The Muslim identity as a Muslim girl, that they feel very much connected to the deen, connected to the masjid, connected to each other in sisterhood. And so our main goal is sisterhood, and our second main goal is growing the love of the Prophet وسلم, and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hearts of these young girls. As you know, we start from age four, our frogs and bunnies, who are going to be joining us next. And we go, yes, frogs and bunnies. <laughs> and, um, and then we have the groups divided by age going forward. So after that come the rainbows, then the busy bees, then the rosebuds, and then finally our high schoolers, who are the birds of paradise. And so these groups span the entire age range, up until a girl from when she's a toddler, all the way until she enters college. Alhamdulillah becomes a woman and then joins us in our women's programming. So Alhamdulillah, we're very honored um, to showcase to you tonight what the girls have been working on consistently every Friday night for the last year now. And they're very excited to show you as well. So we ask for your um, participation and that we keep our voices down, right girls? You know, as much as you're very excited, we're going to listen to each and every group that comes up here to present. We ask the parents to please stay for the duration of the program and not have your kid finish and then take them off because that disrupts the flow. We have a couple important things after each group will be presenting. We will be breaking from Maghrib within about a half hour or so and returning to do the remainder of our program. And at the conclusion of the program, we do a group picture, so we'd really like your daughters to be part of that group picture for the year of 2018. They will receive their gifts, and then everybody is invited to have uh, partake in the potluck dinner, inshallah. So we hope you'll stay here for the entire duration. And again, we're honored to have the parents here. And a quick introduction to our Fox and Bunnies who are ready to join us. Yes, inshallah. They are the four and five year olds, and they are going to be presenting some Quran and the to you today. Um, they're so cute, inshallah. And as the theme says, Frogs and Bunnies, these are two characters, Froggy and Bunny. And they learn through uh, all kinds of character development with the proper traits of a Muslim or Muslim that should be through these puppet characters. And they focus on Quran, they focus on learning and building their sisterhood together. And they also focus on moral development as is age appropriate for this toddler level. So something I'll share throughout the night is how my teachers have come up with this model. It is age appropriate and thematic, meaning that these very, very cute mashallah, <laughs> frogs and bunnies, um, it's based on the toddler age of what a toddler at that stage can actually understand about the deen and understand about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not overwhelming them with anything that is um, above their age range. So we're going to showcase a little bit tonight. You guys ready? Yes? Inshallah. So please give them your undivided attention.
fantastic. These are our first, definitely third graders. This year, the Rainbows group has been focusing on the 99 names of Allah. They've been focusing on songs related to Wudu and Salah. Um, they've also been focused on thankfulness to Allah and how to show thankfulness to their parents. And they've also been focusing on um, qualities and characteristics of a rainbow. So those qualities include having strong bonds of sisterhood and being good friends towards one another, um, being neat and clean. Um, uh, one of the aspects of a rainbow is that there's many different colors to a rainbow, but when they all come together, um, they make something that's very beautiful. So we've been focusing with the girls on how they're all different ages, but when they come together, there's beauty. Um, they all come from different parts of the world, but together they make something beautiful. So here are the rainbows. Sister, sister. Sorry. Everybody cop and cheer, ready? about Islam at the wrong ages and the wrong time, it could actually be detrimental to them. So if we start with our frogs and bunnies, we don't talk about, for example, things that are too metaphorical for them to understand. But as we go forward into the age groups, they have more and more understanding, and we fill in the gaps of that Islamic understanding. MashaAllah. So here, we have our busy bees. And our busy bees, just like the name entails, 
are very, very busy in social law. They're very excited to share with you their nishi tonight, but also to keep in mind that they're just like little bees in a, in a hive who have several components that they work on all through the year. And in those components, they work together really uh, wonderfully in order to produce the outcome, which is very which is very useful honey that is a shifa and a healing to people. So I hope that you'll see that through their group effort and work tonight, and we're really excited to have you with us, Busy Bees. Yeah, I'm 
by Selma and Layla. More than one steer, more than one bear. All because we choose to cover our hair. We were nervous at first. The stairs, the glares, they made it worse. But we held our heads high, from aloft in the sky. The sun is a beautiful region. We have to this criticism. And now we come to meet. I hit jumps around the feet. We ignored the stairs. We brushed off the glare. We follow his love like our papa and he said him. This is Lava they go. My name is Sarah, and today for our painting selection of our presentation, we have Sabrina. Then we have our group painting with Layla, no, sorry, Lena, Marjan, and Sri. These paintings show how our painters feel about the theme of sisterhood. Um, my name is Sabrine, and my painting is, has a picture of the of jobs and snow and modesty. And um, uh, the background is a bit messed up and blurry. To show how the world around you may not be the best, but you have to learn how to um, deal with it. And also, um, her, or her mouth doesn't show because she knows that if um, not everything is perfect, you have to. Um, Try to brush it off and just see the bright things in life. Um, and uh, uh, bullies don't matter and you should just live your life in happiness. I really 
with hope. Thank you, girls. Thank you. We have one more presentation from our Rosebud 7th grade. So throughout this year, we, uh, we began to raise money for Sutha Club. <coughs> uh, we raised money for Sutha Club, and we decided to give this money towards NISA, uh, NISA uh, Foundation. And NISA Foundation is basically a foundation for an organization for uh, families and women that, uh, that have been uh, drawn to domestic violence. And um, we, it was, we decided to give this um, um, uh, towards the organization because us girls, we need to like show sympathy to other, uh, other girls too, to act for uh, uh, kindness. And we would like to give this money to, to sorry, <laughs> towards uh, Sister Saha if she's here. Um, and we would like to give her um, her blessing and give her job like Oraka and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So much, thank you so much, seventh grade Rosebuds, mashallah. And your donation will be given to the Nisa Foundation, inshallah. Sister Saha um, is also one of the therapists of the Khalil Center, and we have a partnership with the Nisa to offer therapy and care for all of the uh, clients for in Nisa. So we will make sure that she receives that, and that all your generous donations, the entire class, gets to the foundation, inshallah ta'ala. With that, I really hope you have seen a little bit about the strength of sisterhood that has happened here. And tell this is not just words, but many of your experiences as parents, you tell me and tell Sister Amina, our beloved coordinator, who you could not do anything without, mashallah, that you, um, yes. Mashallah. She likes to sit in the background, but she really is the heart of everything. <laughs> mashallah. Um, I wanted to say that the, um, that we really um, feel really blessed to know from the parents that they, their daughters every Friday kind of say, we want to go, we want to go, we want to come. And I think that's a symbol of really wanting um, something very special that's happening here week in and week out about forming of the sisterhood. So many of the girls and groups have touched on it. And we are not yet quite done with our program. I realize that Maghrib is coming in soon, but I did want to share with you a couple of things that this idea of growing bonds of love and bonds of sisterhood amongst them is something that we know in, in uh, development of youth is incredibly important, especially for girls and especially for their self-confidence as they get older. Whether or not they are visible as Muslims, the, the deen comes from the inside and pours itself out. So what's important here is that they support each other from all their diverse backgrounds and all different walks of life and all spectrum of the sound that they are currently on and their families are on, mashallah. And with that, I think it's incredibly important to fall back on a peer group that is Muslim, so that when they are surrounded by folks who are not Muslim and many friends who are not, that they always have this Muslim group that they fall back on that is always going to be like their rock, that is always there and supportive for them. And from there, there's girls that become their friends and are stay their friends. So when we start from age four all the way through high school and into college, and from the girls who have actually graduated from our programs, come back and taught in our programs, and are currently in college, married, and beyond, they will tell you that some of their very best friends were found here in this program. So we pray, inshallah, that that's something that Allah puts barakah in. We ask for your continued support, that you continue to bring the girls in the now that you're involved in Rahmah. I know that Sister Amina has our box here of donations that we're going to pass around. We usually do this at the end of the year to help cover any expenses and costs, especially for the programming that we put in, the gifts that we bring, and so on. This is a very low cost program, so that it's open doors for everybody and anybody who'd like to come in. But with that, there are expenses, so we ask for your continued donations, inshallah ta'ala. And we still have Rosebud's eighth grade group and our high school group to still present, and also our concluding uh, presentation, special presentation as well, that's going to happen at the very end. But I think this is a, a good time to go ahead and have everybody prepare for their um, Maghrib prayers, because it shall be in in about a few minutes. So if you don't have wudu, feel free to go ahead and get that wudu taken care of. And once, especially right after Melody, we ask you to come immediately back in because we have the remainder of our program. Please don't go anywhere. Thank you so much. These girls just celebrated with the graduation party because next year they'll officially be high schoolers and they'll be in the Birds of Paradise group. 
so they had a lovely party down the road um, a couple of weeks ago. Throughout this year, they spent time focusing on Islamophobia, male-female interactions, um, and they spent an, an extra amount of time focusing on peers and determining what makes a good friend, um, what is a bad friend, and how do you separate yourself from someone who um, you deem no longer to be someone who is supporting you in the right direction. So here are the eighth grade rosebuds. While our rosebuds are coming up to the stage, and if you notice, we had sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade rosebuds. So, in years past, we used to group them in one group, and now they're in three different groups, so that it's even more specific and age appropriate. So, these are our eighth graders, mashallah. And just to let you know, while we're having the presentation, Amina has started to send around the donation box. So, when it comes your way, please be generous to the Rahma Foundation and all the girls programming. Thank you. All right, girls, we're excited to hear what you have for us. Assalamualaikum, my name is Sajaya and I will be representing the Inkay Rosebuds. <laughs> um, today we will be showing, we will be sharing our poems and speeches. So, my name is Marjan Habib. I feel like I am a superhero, but not a superhero at the same time. Well, I mean, superheroes live double lives, so I guess that explains it. Because I'm a Muslim, we're all going to a Catholic school. A Muslim girl going to a Catholic school coming from Southern California. A Muslim girl coming from a Catholic school coming in eighth grade the last year of the school. So you can imagine how hard that is. And then, cherry on top kids in my class are so rowdy. Like they talk all the time. Like they cannot physically stop talking. And I thought, what the heck am I going to do now? What am I going to do? I had no game plan. So I grew closer to Allah. I did more solo, alhamdulillah, and I started to read Quran a bit more. Even if Quran was a bit hard to understand and hard to read, I still pushed through. And I read a little bit every day. And I learned that I learned that Allah is my protector, not only my creator. He has many other things. He has 99 names. And all of them are powerful in some way. Basically, to conclude, I'll just say that if it weren't for Allah, I wouldn't be standing here saying this. That's all I'm going to say. and concerns. All I can do is ask a lot in return. 
What should I listen? What should I forget? It's all to do with my intentions and mindset. This is my hijab, no matter what people have to say, I'm ready, I'm here to wear my hijab every day. No one can fall off, no one can stop me, because Allah has made me completely capable, confident, and free. the Rahma program since I was eight years old and this has been one of my most beneficial years. The program has taught me what it means to be a Muslim woman and has given me a place where I can meet new people and learn new things. I connected with people who are good, going to encourage me to keep up with my faith rather than stray, stray away from it. This is where I learned surahs and how to pray. I became more comfortable in the hijab and realized what it meant to wear. Coming here every Friday and over the summers, I was always reminded of my faith when it, in everyday life it can be easy to stray away from it. When I was younger, this was something my something my parents forced me to do, but over the years, I look forward to coming here and meeting with my sisters to help me become a better person. Sorry, hold on one second, okay? These girls, there's a lot of mumbling and talking, and it's making it really hard to hear the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful poems and the words that the girls are saying. So please, everyone, absolutely quiet. Thank you. My name is Hanya and I'll be performing a speech. Halga as a word was very new to me when my mom approached me a couple of years ago. At first, I thought that it would just be a place where we learn Islamic history and study. I absolutely hated the idea of going to yet another school-like place. So my Halga classes started and I would come down to the MCC and spend some time going through the sessions. After just a few days of Halga, I realized that it was not at all what I perceived studying would be. It was actually something I enjoyed and would look forward to every Friday. I love many things about, Holocaun about the Halakha time we spend as a group. It is not just a group, but a strong Islamic friendship circle. I feel like my teachers in Halakha are people who I can trust and share my problems with. They teach me about the importance of Islam, and because of them, I now try to perform all my prayers. There are things that I learned here which I would totally be unaware of otherwise. For instance, how to deal with Islamophobia or culture and family values. Even after talking about such serious matters, we always find time to joke around and just have fun. I hope to continue being part of such a great group. Assalamualaikum, my name is Rukia and I'll be reading to you guys my poem. I am something, it is foolish to presume that every, everyone gives up in life. It is evident that I am a petal in green, lifeless petal. No longer it can be said that we can, we will not be unique. In, a, in the future, society will not change us. I do not succeed that only some will succeed in life. Experts tell me everyone is not special, but this will not be true in my era. Everyone is, on earth has a purpose. Once upon a time, I tell you, honesty is more important than perfection. I have my priorities straight. The world will know that they will not change my mind. So in 30 years, I will tell my children, without a hurt, we are something. We are nothing. It is a lie, and makeup cannot cave in our emotion. I realize that may be a shock, but I am not worthless, and I refuse to believe that I am a nothing. And I thank all my teachers and sisters who's, who sat here and all along. Thank you. I would generally think that I am a good person. But even the best people have something to improve on. When I first came to this halqa, I knew as a, Islam as a religion that must be followed, a rule even. I've been in this halqa for two years now, and I learned things here that I could never learn in a classroom. I learned that Islam is a lifestyle. I learned to love and accept a huge part of who I am. I now walk proudly through my school hallway, representing the best image of Islam that I can. Because making dua is not something I say before I eat or when I wake up. It is not something I recite without knowing the meaning to. At making dua is asking for help in times of need and being grateful for what Allah has given me. Making dua is something that comes from the heart. Because knowledge is that, is that which benefits, not that which is memorized. I made friends here, with some friends that will help me keep, that will help keep me on the straight path. My faith has become stronger, and I'm very proud of who I am. Um, 
alaikum. My name is Zahra, and I have been in the eighth grade Rose. I mean, I've been in the um, Rahma Foundation for as long as I can remember. So, um, as a Muslim woman, I wanted to represent my religion in the proper way. Uh, I didn't want to act in a way that would make people doubt us or dress in a way that isn't appropriate. So, ever since I've been going to Rahma, I have learned many things about how to treat others and how to overcome. Uh, Islamophobia and all these other challenges. Uh, I've made many good friends over the years who uh, helped me remember what is permissible and what is not. Uh, I've really enjoyed my time here at Rahma with my friends and teachers and hope to see them again next year, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Samaya and well, I'm just going to be saying things off the top of my head because I didn't have enough time to like write down what I was going to say. So I've only been with the 8th grade Rosebuds for only, for like two months. I know it's a short time, but I've grown very attached to them. And I think of them as my sisters. And I'd just like to thank my um, two very special people, my teachers, um, Sister Afra and Sister Danielle, for making this very interesting and fun experience, and yeah, we will all give them a seeing kind of as we go from stage to stage and group to group how the girls mature and how their thinking processes and I just want to reiterate that we as the, <laughs> the organizers nor the teachers have any idea what they're going to say when they get on the stage in case you think that we pre-screen what they say we actually do not a lot of fun so I'm always as surprised as you are sitting here every year at the end of the year to see what comes out of their mouths mashallah but it's always phenomenal and amazing and really speaks to the goals that we have set here at the Rahman Foundation of having strong bonds of sisterhood and growing that love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And also I want to tell you, before we bring up our last group and then after that our special presentation, the, um, that as some of you know, but maybe not everybody knows, at the same time the girls are in their halakas, the mothers of both the girls and the boys program attend a halakha in this room on Friday nights. And for the moms who did not know that, we invite you next year to come join us, inshallah. And I think it's incredibly important that what is taught in the girls' halakha is reiterated and taught in the women's halakha, so that all these beautiful and wonderful lessons are re-emphasized at home. Because you can't only grow in two hours one time a week, nor can you be Muslim two hours one time a week, mashallah. As all of you know, it's an ongoing process. And so I've, I've been really touched about the mothers here as well, and all the growth that has happened with the women too. So alhamdulillah, as you can see, it's a very comprehensive program going from our little bitty girls all the way through the ages of womanhood, alhamdulillah. And with that, on that note, we'll bring up our final group, our Birds of Paradise. The Birds of Paradise, come on over guys. The Birds of Paradise are the only group that is actually named themselves. The other groups were all named by my teacher who had come up with very specific name groups, rainbows and fizzy bees and rosebuds. But the Birds of Paradise are self-named and they are our high schoolers. So welcome to our Birds of Paradise. And please keep our voices Make sure you guys come forward to our We are the Birds of Paradise group, a class consisting of mostly high school students. The topic we will be discussing today is Akhara. 
As humans, we wake up in the morning for school or work. We're all driven by different things. I want the biggest house, the nicest car, the newest phone. Materialism has dr driven our society past its limit. We have come to value tangible items, thinking they will make us happy, the things that we can physically touch and see. As Muslims in a time of great modernization and progression, it is essential that we remember our Akhla. Now, I would like to add that my version of Akhla will be different than yours, the same way that my worldly desires are different than yours. If I were to ask you to design a home for yourself in which you will live out the rest of your life, how would you go about it? Would you leave the last minute details, the main things that you want, to the last day? Would you just hope that I will somehow manage to conjure up what you want without any actions from your part? In the same way, our daily actions are what is building our Akhra. Our Prophet wasallam stated, You will die the way you live. Today is overcast. The sun is hidden behind the golden hills. A 19-year-old Muslim girl who came from the deepest pits of Detroit, Michigan. My name is Alea. At times, and by that I mean all the time, I feel lost in this place, like an innocent lamb stuck in a group of hungry wolves. I work day and night to make a living, and when I do have time to rest, I question my need for living, my need in this dunya. Sometimes I wonder if the conditions I live in now is because of a mistake on my part sometime in the future or in the past. Often I feel like the world, the whole world, is against me, but I don't know why I'm being haunted this way. I do my dark brown hair in a messy bun, throw my bag on my shoulder, and walk out the broken, yet memorable door. Our first question is, what does Akhra mean to you? Akhra means to stay on the right path and be successful for the hereafter. Akhra is a time, place, and reward we spend our lifetime working towards so we can prove ourselves to Allah and please Him. Akhra means that all of our actions that we've done affect that one day. Akhar to me, me means the end of this world. Akhirah means the time we're all working toward. Um, Akhirah to me means to improve every day and have an impact on the people around me. Akhirah is the purpose why we live on this earth. It will be the result in this dunya. Akhirah for me is the life after this world. To me, Akhri means forgetting everything that we're going through and focusing on the real goal, which is getting to Jannah, that we're, inshallah, going to get to. Akhri is to go back to Allah in a state he is pleased with. What is it like the hereafter? The world is just a covering, hiding from us the real thing. What we live for, act for, and wait for, the Akhirah. Some of us turn a blind eye to the path. We all do at some point or another, but some more than others. God looks for that sincerity in us. For the light, even just a speck of it, he sees it in our heart. Then from that, we will be judged and taken into account for our actions. We'll get what we deserve, a reward, a reward or a punishment, and that will be our Akhirah. The second question is, what are your Akhra goals? My Akhra goals are to practice patience and self-resistance, inshallah. My Akhra goal is at the end of each day to take a moment to reflect on my day and forgive anyone who has wronged me because you never want to have ill will for anyone in your heart. My Akhra goal is to apply whatever good I learned from my life. My goal is to keep good and clean intentions. My Akhirah goal is to, inshallah, spend more time helping build my community and profit. My Akhirah goal is to reflect and evaluate myself every day um, and, and use an effort to better myself every day. My Akhirah goal 
is to have unfathomable knowledge about my dean and our prophets. My afternoon goals are to think before acting and refrain from anger. My afternoon goal is to drink from the hands of the prophets of lies. <coughs> I realize now I walked life pa life's pathways with a hand over my eyes, tears seeping through the crevices of my fingers, stumbling without anything particular in mind, then disappointed when I ended up nowhere. I saw life as darkness, and there isn't much you can do in darkness. You can't even breathe, not real breathing, when you want to wake up and do things, things that make you kinder and happier and closer to God. I keep my, mind, my eyes open now. I no longer hide behind my hands, make living in a sort of trap I made myself. I see life as a stunning array of paths to choose from, some leading to dark corners and others to bright, sunny valleys. I choose to travel to places that are high up. They take climbing and tripping and deep breaths, but they have the most beautiful views and the most beautiful people you could ever meet. This is how I walk now. I walk in the direction of what God wants, a well-lit journey. Thank you. Okay, brothers and sisters, now we ask for you all to raise your hands in da'a as our girls lead us in a group da'a. Thank you. Oh Allah, please guide us on the straight path, the path of those whom you favor, not the path of those who deserve your wrath. And Ya Allah, please let us be among those who are under the shade of your throne on the day of judgment. And Ya Allah, please let us drink from the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Allah, please always help me have good intentions. Make me a woman of my words and not just make intentions to do good, but to act upon it as well. Amen. Ya Allah, please make me a better person each day. Ya Allah, please <coughs> guide us all to the straight path. Amen. Oh Allah, please forgive the sins of the believers on the day of judgment. Amen. Ya Allah, bring peace to our families and mothers in times of struggles and hardships. Oh Allah, thank you for everything that you have blessed us all with. Please help us to become closer to you by reciting Quran and praying every day. Please help us to not be stressed out because we know that you will always be with us. Amen. Ya Allah, thank you for everything you have given us and have not given us. Please give Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tons of blessings. Ya Allah, we pray for you to give us health and wealth so we can use these advantages to better worship you, Ya Allah. Amen. Ya Allah, please let us appreciate everything we have and let us fulfill the rights of our parents. Amen. Ya Allah, please let us see the faces of every single person in this room again and Jannah and
honey girls. We're almost done. Thank you so much for your patience. There are wonderful goodies and treats and lots of pizza waiting in the other room. But we need a few more moments of your undivided attention, okay? I really, really need you guys to quiet down, please. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Georgette, and I'm here with my co-facilitator, Amber. Assalamu alaikum. So this year we've had many amazing girls, but we would like to make a shout out to two girls in particular. One young lady has gone above and beyond by balancing Dean and Dunya. Throughout the holiday, she worked tutoring kids, excelling in AP classes, and being an active role model to her siblings. Despite her rigorous and tight schedule, she managed to make time to our halakha and be an active leader and participant. It's been a pleasure to see her flourish over the last two years. The second young lady we want to shout out is the Mashtid Pillar. She brings knowledge, maturity, and humor to our group. Always the first here and the last to leave, she sets an example for the younger girls through her hard work and pursuit of scholastic knowledge and her thirst for the bean. Always has words of wisdom to share, with the humility being one of her innate characteristics. It has been a pleasure to see both of them grow. Please welcome, Please welcome our college-bound future Triton and future Mustang, Pusna and Yatma, to be here! from the time that they were in middle school and into high school, alhamdulillah. It is incredible to see the girls grow and blossom, nurture, give back, come back into the group and teach the younger girls. And inshallah, we wish them all success until they as they head into the next stage of their life, inshallah ta'ala. We now want to also, I want to actually say something really important because she never lets me do this, so I'm just going to put it in. <laughs> Sister Abida Abdullah, as you know, is our coordinator for the Young Muslim Halakas. She is also the coordinator in our summer camps. And honestly, like I said earlier, the heart of our program, Alhamdulillah, she knows the names of all your daughters and all the girls, and she's able to tell who goes where in which classroom around which part of this building, Alhamdulillah. And with her, we actually um, probably couldn't survive. So we want to take a moment, please, and make dua for her and her children and her family for all the hard work with day in and day out, Friday in and Friday out, non-stop, alhamdulillah. Please make, take just a moment, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless her and her family and give them all kinds of khair in this dunya and in the akhirah. Ameen. And on that note, we have a couple of girls who want to come and actually say a couple of things as we're kind of bringing our program to the end. Come on over, girls. possible without them and they're such amazing people. This is really a truly an experience that you'll never forget, so we really just want to thank them for everything that they've done.
like on the day lab. I did want to just point out that the group of ladies that came up are some of our teachers. And I did want to take a moment, actually, this is the part of the program where we want to take a moment and thank all of our teachers. I hope you each have gotten to meet the ladies who run your girls' programs. In each class, there are one or two main teachers and several assistants. We have women teachers, mashallah, but we also have several college age and school age uh, teachers as well who help us in our assistance. And they are wonderful. I have a, really the blessing to teach them before your girls come. So they come extra early to take their own class and halakha before they teach your girls their halakha. So they are very, very dedicated. They spend a good portion of Friday here at the masjid and also throughout the week planning and as Khada uh, Am and I know on the WhatsApp text threads that they have back and forth and back and forth deciding what crafts your girls will do this week, what events they're going to plan, what Qiyam al they're going to have. And just speaking of Qiyam al I just want to put a quick note quick here that um, I've had the blessing to attend part of the Qiyam al for some of the groups. Sister Amina actually is here all night long into the next morning with <laughs> the groups. Jazakallah And it's always amazing to me. For example, the Busy Bees, on your PM, we had an amazing discussion, and they talked everything from girls, friends, bullying, they wanted parents, they had so many questions, we had this long Q&A that they were so excited to share all kinds of ideas, <coughs> and then they had a fashion show and a talent show, and in that fashion show and talent show, I was amazed at the different talents our girls have, the beautiful voices, the lots and lots of gymnastic abilities. <laughs> they were doing cartwheels in their fancy dresses, nonetheless, up and down this room, up and down and up and down cartwheels, <laughs> mashallah, and teaching each other gymnastic tricks. Um, all of this before they had their prayer of Qiyam al Alhamdulillah. And it's a very fun and enjoyable experience, right, Busy Bees? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I think if we told them we have a Qiyam tonight, they'd be here all night. Yes? <laughs> I think so too. With the Birds of Paradise, I really enjoyed having a Q&A session with them as well, and much, you know, um, deep, deep questions. We had a box of questions that we went through and really discussed some pretty heavy things and important things and things that run through the minds of these young women who are now, you know, blossoming into this next stage of life, serious things. And I think that that's what's important, that they have a place that feels safe, that they get solid, inshallah, Islamic knowledge, and they act upon that. You see there in their du'as and also in the um, discussion of what is Akhira, what are their goals, how advanced their thinking is, and really what they're hoping to do, which is we say, always have Akhira vision. Be here in the dunya fully, but absolutely have your sights on the Akhira. So I'm so pleased that that's what they chose to present to you, alhamdulillah. Our program would never be complete without you as parents, so we want to thank you. And we also want to thank our teachers. So we want to take a moment here and do um, thanks for each of them. So please bear with us while we do that. Well, uh, many of you contributed in the last week or so to gifts for the teachers. And we really appreciate it. Um, we do have some cards and some gifts that we want to give to the teachers. I don't see the frogs and bunnies um, teachers here yet. So I'll start with the teachers of the older girls and kind of work our way down. Um, instead. So if Paula Georgette and Paula Amber could come to the stage, please. Rainbow's teacher. 
teachers, mashallah, you see as the groups get younger, the number of teachers um, increases. So we make sure that all the girls get the attention that they deserve. So our rainbows teachers. Paula Bechdolin. All you have to do is move this one back and forth. Oh yeah, adjust it. some very important dates if you can keep them in mind. One of which is May 28th and June 1st. Those are going to be women piyams. They'll be in this room on those nights after Tarawiyah prayer is over. We'll have women's piyam um, on both of those nights with lectures and prayer and so on until the time of Sukhud. And we'll pray the Peshat together and we'll head home. So that's what's happening immediately after this. After that, inshallah, as Khada Amra mentioned, our uh, girls camps open up, so we go from Friday evenings into the summer camps. And they will start at the last week of June and run all through the first week of August, inshallah ta'ala. So we hope your girls will enroll into those programs and continue to benefit from them. I also wanted to make a, a couple words. Uh, Nyama, she hears? Yes, Nyama had an announcement for uh, a fundraising campaign that's happening, and as did I, inshallah. So now we'll come forward, and we'll just make those announcements before we do the pictures.
Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Nama. I'm a senior in high school at Hayward High School. And I'm the founder and president of our school's Muslim Student Association. So inshallah on May 25th, I'd like to invite you all to a fundraiser that my MSA and I are holding. Um, inshallah we're going to be donating our money to Syria through the Islamic Relief. Uh, it'll be a dinner. The location is still to be determined. It'll either be in our school's library or in our school's cafeteria. Inshallah, Hala Amina will send out an email and keep you guys updated. I just wanted to invite you all to that and inshallah see you guys there. It will begin at, the doors will open at 6.30 and the event itself will begin at 7. So inshallah if you guys would be able to make it out, it will be in Niftar and I would love to see you all there. Um, if you can't make it, you guys can also, um, we're going to be collecting donations. So if you guys would want to meet me after this and you can give me the money and inshallah I'll put it with our funds for the fundraiser donations. Jazakallah khair. Yeah, an example of all of our, the charitable work that our, our teens do, mashallah. Um, also, for those families who have been part of the Rahmah program for some years, although this is separate from the Rahmah Foundation, I have, um, we, many of us actually, women in this room, have been supporting an important project of an orphanage, a couple of orphanages actually that are in Syria. One is for boys and one is for girls. And the funds that you give go directly to, um, as a cat, go directly to the, the children themselves for their education, clothing, food, and their Islamic education as well. And that is given the sadaqa is go, goes to actually building up the, um, the orphanage itself and making um, fixes to the buildings and so on and so forth. Those are actually in Syria. Those, though, are only collected by cash. And so for those who are interested in donating, there's a cat or donating any sadaqa to that project. You're welcome to see me afterwards. Um, those are hand delivered to actually my teacher who delivers them directly to the group that's organizing the orphanage, inshallah. So, another possibility for diversifying your funds this Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. They'll also be collecting funds during the women's weekend. The, um, and I also wanted to announce for both men and women, there is a Ramadan lecture that I'll be doing at Hub 925 on June 2nd on the, um, on the spirituality and keeping up our spiritual growth in Ramadan. And I welcome you all to attend that. I think that concludes our um, announcements. Yes, our announcements. Alhamdulillah. So we announced our summer camp. So please register right away. There are going to be week by week registration, so you can register for whichever week that we would like your girls or your boys to attend the program. But they do fill up very quickly, and we get wait lists right away, and families are always asking for spots. So please do not delay in registering your girls if you'd like them to attend this summer or your boys.